Hey, welcome to Destructive Creativity. Today we are making and playing with liquid oxygen. It's gonna be super cool, glad you're here. Welcome to Destructive Creativity. We exist for you, for science, and for fun. So if any of those things appeal to you, go ahead and click that subscribe button, drop us a like. So, liquid oxygen is notoriously hard to come by, so we're gonna just make our own, and I've heard it's really a pretty blue color. I'm looking forward to seeing how this all turns out. Let's go. I've got my liquid nitrogen here in my uh, nice Timmy's mug. That's all you need. We have liquid nitrogen, and we have some styrofoam cups. We are going to be condensing liquid oxygen out of the air. We're gonna actually pull the oxygen out of the air, turn it into its liquid form, and then play with it. I'm just gonna pour it. There's a nice cup full of liquid nitrogen. Let's do that a few more times. Remember, if you're gonna wear safety glasses, make sure you put them on your eyes and not your head. Styrofoam is a great insulator, so hopefully this is going to make the liquid nitrogen last as long as possible. There we go. So what's happening here is we have cups full of liquid nitrogen, and they're slightly insulated, so hopefully they stick around for a little bit. We might add, top them up here and there, just make sure that they stay really cold. So liquid nitrogen exists at a temperature of approximately negative 210 degrees Celsius, whereas liquid oxygen condenses at around negative 186 degrees Celsius. So when the air is cooled to the temperature of liquid nitrogen, liquid oxygen condenses out of the air. We're actually pulling the oxygen out of the air into the liquid nitrogen. So the liquid nitrogen is denser than liquid oxygen, so the liquid, so the oxygen will settle at the bottom and then just continue to stack on and on and on. So hopefully, in about half an hour to an hour, we're gonna come back and all of the liquid nitrogen has boiled away and we're gonna be left with liquid oxygen. Then we'll combine them all and play with it. The reason why I'm doing this outside where it's windy and not inside in a controlled environment is because liquid nitrogen has an expansion ratio of 694, I believe. So that means that one cubic liter of liquid nitrogen will expand to almost 700 cubic liters of gas nitrogen. And nitrogen gas displaces the oxygen in the air, which poses a significant risk for asphyxiation. So once we get the oxygen, I'm I might move back in, inside where it's a little bit more controlled, but for now, it's just safer to do it outside. An important note for scientists in Canada, when dealing with multiple different vessels of Tim Hortons, always remember which one holds liquid nitrogen and which one holds your morning coffee. It's not a mistake that you'll make more than once. While we wait for this to actually finish up and we can make the liquid oxygen, I would really encourage you guys to go and check out historyalivonline.com. That's a website where myself and my brother teach history, science, and geography in daily video lessons with worksheets. It's a great teaching resource, especially if you're doing school from home. So go check it out. It's awesome. You won't regret it. It's free for the first month. I'll post a link down in the description. You really should go check it out. So why would I want to play with liquid oxygen other than the fact that it's liquid oxygen, so yeah, of course I do. Well, liquid nitrogen is a really cold substance, very similar to liquid oxygen oxygen. But liquid nitrogen is completely non-magnetic, it's non-flammable, essentially the only thing cool about it is it's really 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 cold, which admittedly is very cool. <laughs> liquid oxygen on the other hand is magnetic, it's paramagnetic, so we can actually interact with a magnetic fluid with some magnets, and I have some super strong neodymium magnets here to play with that. It's also very very volatile. Liquid oxygen is not flammable, but it is a super fuel. So anything that is flammable, like a coffee cup or my clothing or anything, essentially we're giving it a huge amount of fuel just to burn really fast and really hot. So we'll be really careful with it, and yeah, hopefully we'll be just fine. As I said before, liquid nitrogen is not magnetic. However, liquid oxygen is paramagnetic. So if I just take this magnet, these are some super strong neodymium magnets, and just dip it in, that right there is liquid oxygen stuck to the magnet. 
So cool, so it's working, that's great. All right, so we've left this for about an hour. Now I've moved it all inside. We're getting down really close to the bottom here and there is a blue liquid in the bottom of these cups. Um, I tried to take a picture of it, but it's just too, it's too light of a blue to really pick up against the white styrofoam. So hopefully when I combine all these together, uh, I'll be able to show you that a little bit better. Let's test this out here. So I'm just gonna pour a little bit onto this plastic container. You can see it dancing around due to the Leidenfrost effect. And let's see. Yeah, that is pure liquid oxygen. That is so cool. Okay, okay, I gotta make this a little bit better. We have successfully made liquid oxygen, but it's just not lasting long enough to be able to observe the effects of magnets and other things very well. So what I'm gonna do is effectively use the Leidenfrost effect so that we can observe the liquid oxygen for longer, maybe play with it with a bit of magnets or whatever. So the Leidenfrost effect is essentially when there's a large difference in temperature between a liquid and a solid, there will be a little vapor barrier in between the liquid and the solid, and that will actually help this, the liquid last longer than if we were just exposed to the air. And then when we pour the liquid oxygen onto a hot plate, it's actually going to last longer than if we were to, we were to pour it onto a cold surface. It's fascinating the way that, that physics works. So our liquid oxygen here, I'm just gonna pour it on just a little bit. Do you see how, oh, look at that. That is so cool. Now, I can actually move this around with the magnet. If I get too close, it just gets sucked up right away. So this liquid oxygen is actually levitating right now. Well, that's a little bit too much. Levitating on a little pocket of steam, and with this magnet, I can draw it around. Look at that. It's so cool. Let's see if I can zoom in. Oh, look at that, it's bubbling right on the tip of my magnet. If I get too close, it gets stuck to the magnet, like that, and then it just boils away. So that is liquid oxygen, and I will just play around with it. See how it, see how it gets stuck right there? That's a magnetic liquid. and I can just draw it around just like that. That's so cool. So let's go, I'll pour some more on here. That is just so cool. I didn't quite get pure liquid oxygen. It was diluted with liquid nitrogen. In order for me to get pure liquid oxygen, I would probably have to use a lot more nitrogen and then let it boil down a lot farther and then watch for that blue color and just repeat the process over and over and over again. That's probably how channels like The King of Random was able to get that nice blue color, was by doing a very, very long process. I don't see how this could be done in just simply one session to get that much liquid oxygen. But very cool, this is Destructive Creativity. If you enjoyed this and if you like science or fun or just random stuff, consider subscribing. All right, see you next time, bye. After reviewing the footage, I realized that I said that liquid nitrogen was more dense than liquid oxygen. I actually was thinking about the opposite. It's the exact reverse of what I said. So always know what I think and not what I say. Yeah.